everyone, welcome to Top Dead Center. I'm Brandon and I'm in my new YouTube studio. I hope you guys like it. Today you're gonna see Shane reviewing the Chevy Bolt. Now the Chevy Bolt is an all electric vehicle. It's an EV and he's gonna be daily driving this car for a week. After looking through some of the footage, I wanted to put in some key points in the video that I think are good talking points. And you'll see me pop in right here talking about the car a little bit, but largely this is him daily driving the car. Enjoy. All right, everybody. We're going to take the great little bolts that we're in. We get to do this one a little bit solo. Um, Brandon's been a little bit tied up in other things. Actually, Maggie, I'm a bit tied up at the moment. I've had this now for two days now. And uh, me and Brandon kind of took a look at it and sat around it and stuff. And, you know, we decided to let's kind of join, do an EV thing. You know, there's a lot of them going out there. Everybody's running them. You know, Tesla's huge in that market. Uh, you know, so we wanted to see what it's all, all about. And, you know, it seems like the Bolt is getting quite a bit of action on it. When you look at the outside of it, it seems really small. Um, and that's not the case. You get inside of it, and it is actually a pretty good sized car. This car I did pick up as a premium, so it's got leather, the Bose sound system, heated steering wheel, you know, has everything on it. It is weird driving it because it's quiet. You can't hear anything. You can't feel anything as far as shifts and, you know, things like that. I'm kind of a big gearhead, so I like engine noise. I like to feel the transmission. But I can get used to this. It's very comfortable. We you know, we've talked about it before at home in our family that, you know, looking at maybe getting an electric car because both me and my wife do commute. We do probably 70 miles a day I'm 60 miles or so a day so in in fuel and stuff I mean this would be absolutely wonderful I actually got an opportunity to drive this little go-kart which you'll see in the next clip here we're driving down to the Seattle International Auto Show and I'm driving a bolt it's not the same bolt that Shane drove but it's a bolt and I'm with Shane today and I'm in a Chevy Bolt. Now, you're watching the video where he got to drive the Bolt for a whole week and kind of a driving review, which I think is a great idea because the Chevy Bolt is basically gonna be somebody's commuter car. But I got to finally drive an electric car, and what do I think? Well, uh, this is weird, as Shane has said multiple times. Uh, it's a very odd, surreal experience. Uh, there is a sound, there's a little bit of a, a sound into the car, but it's like, the singer sewing machine spooling up. Quiet as a mouse. I gotta say, it's it's probably the perfect commuter car, really, because it's, it's quiet. These cars come with a great sound system. Uh, you can see everything that you need to see, so as far as visibility, it's great. I'm sure parking this car is absolutely awesome. It's tiny. Now, he mentioned that this car has a ton of plastic, uh, and he you, you said uh, it, it might be like an electric car thing. My theory on that is, well, they're trying to get all the range that they can out of it, so they're going to try to make it as light as possible. So that's my theory, is they're just trying to make it as light as possible, and really, uh, it's kind of space age in a way. The way they did the, the plastic and the cool patterns and all that, the fit and finish is great, so that offsets the fact that it's, it's plastic. Okay, now Shane mentions that it could be a very, very cheap alternative to a gas car because of the fuel savings. Now I'm going to show you another clip at the end of the day after we get back from the Seattle International Auto Show where we actually calculated how much it cost to go all the way down there and back. We did a long trip. We went where you came from your house, mm -hmm. which is about 25 miles to my house, and then we then went from there to Seattle and back. So the total came out to 152 miles, 43.4 kilowatt hours used, we, and you're going to have enough to get home the other 25 miles back to your house because it's it says uh, about 62 miles left on the range so for us that's a lot that's, that's like a road trip that's like a family road trip almost yeah, and that it comes up being well over 200 miles on a charge 200 miles on a charge which is going to cost you like what do we figure out six bucks six bucks around yeah. here for electricity cost it's got regen and it'll tell you how much 
how many kilowatts is putting back into the battery on regen just by doing what Chevy calls the one foot driving um, because it does feel like you're putting on the brakes when you let off. Really, really cool feature. I actually like that a lot. I noticed when I was driving around town the other day with it, I was gaining mileage by driving in town because you go from stoplight to stoplight and I was letting it use regen. On most models of Chevys, the bars of the steering wheel have what's the equivalent of paddle shifters behind them that are actually used in the infotainment system for volume and track selection. On this car, it's a little bit different. You still retain the right-hand side for volume control, but on the left-hand side, it's a variable regen controller. I found this out the hard way when I drove the car, where I just ham-fisted it, pulled it all the way in, and it basically applies the equivalent of hard brakes. And that was a bit of a surprise after Shane told me that it's actually a variable controller. I then lightly pulled it and it lightly applied the regen. So it, it does give you options about how hard you want to regen. And that is a very cool feature because it immediately puts it back into the battery to be used instead of wasting it away as heat in the brake pads. And it also adds to longevity because you're not using your brake pads on the car. And you can actually use that to be more aggressive of regen. And it'll, I saw everywhere where I was getting almost 50 kilowatts of regen when I was coming to a stop. I was using it and slowing down, taking up the space a little bit more instead of just using the brake itself. I think they're saying this thing has like 200 horse or something like that. And I'm telling you that that is immediate power, which is a big bonus going to electric, is you have instant torque. Just like most all the ones that we test, all these Chevys, um, we try to get some, recently we've been getting the ones that have, you know, more options. The sticker on this car is right around $45,000. And you might think, dang, that's expensive for a little electric car. On that note, it is loaded, it is a Premier, it does have, I think everything that you can get in these, maybe there's a few things you can't. The rebates and the incentives and everything that they have on these cars, somewhere between $9,500 and $9,800 off or something like that on this car, which dips this car under $35,000 and then you get tax credits on that. I don't believe that there is another car on the market that's this size that has the range that this does. Their, I think their average range to call on this car is 238. Uh, I've been doing research. I've seen people 250 plus, depending on how they're driving. You know, if you can get 250 miles out of it on one charge, I mean, that's incredible. I mean, who really needs on a commute or anything like that to go more than that? I mean, that's, that's huge. I mean, that would last me two or three days without charging it. So here is the center stack here where all the infotainment stuff is. So crazy enough, this thing has a sport button. Now I did hit that the other day and all it really does is just change the pedal feel. This little guy here, we like to call that one our fun button. I will say it is there for a reason and it's there for a good reason. If you get too crazy with the go pedal, this little electric car will spin the tires and it's a handful in the steering wheel. I will tell you that. The radio controls over here, you do have your home button, which brings us to that, which is what I have set up for our home, bu home button at the moment. On and off for the stereo, your volume knob. I'm a big fan of the knobs. Um, I know some people don't like knobs, but I like the knobs. Brandon likes knobs. Just kind of one of our, th our things that we do. Hey. All I'm saying is I like manual controls in a car. That's all I'm saying. Tuning back and forth there. Your HVAC controls are right here. Temperature control here, and you can put it on auto here. This one does have heated seats, believe it or not, driver and passenger. We'll go back up here to the steering wheel here for a moment. So and it does have a heated steering wheel, and I'm telling you, it gets really, really warm. I actually used it this morning just to try and see kind of what the power draw was on it when I had it on and off. Uh, it's not a ton. It, it actually doesn't draw a lot. It does have lane keep 
cruise control and stuff functions are over here. These ones are your functions for going through your screen on the dashboard there. And go through over here, you got, you know, audio, phone, your OnStar layout, and all these different options here. But what I liked is this actually has a shifter. Moves back and forth, um, reverses over here. You know, now that I've had it for a good couple days, um, the being electric isn't as weird to me as I thought it would be. It's almost relaxing. I mean, you just kind of get in it, you drive, it's quiet, it's nice. I can turn the Bose radio on and listen to that. It's just peaceful. Um, not being, not having to go to a gas station is absolutely awesome. You know, I don't have to fill up. I'm sure it's, you know, costing me a little bit charging it every once in a while, but if you look at some of the other electrics and different things that are out there, you know, and their, and their wheels and stuff, they got all this weird funky stuff on them. Chevy did a killer job on these. These wheels look really sharp on this car. To me, that's kind of a big appealing thing because who wants a car that's gonna look all weird? Yeah, it's electric and it gets great EPG or whatever the heck they call it. But, you know, if it looks weird, who really is gonna to wanna to drive it or own it? You know, this actually has a decent appealing look to the outside of it. I really like the nose of this car. It's, it's very pleasant looking. I like the lines on the front. Uh, the back to me just looks like a little five door car. You know, who doesn't like a little four door sport hatch looking thing. Storage in the back of the car, as far as in the little trunk area back there, isn't ginormous, isn't huge. But like I said, if you are pretty much just using this as a commuter car, just driving around and stuff you don't have a lot of things you want to put in your car you put in your car a lot um, there's ample room back there so if you guys haven't considered one of these the Chevy Bolt not to be confused with the Volt which is a hybrid the Bolt EV I would really consider one go out and drive one I really don't think that you will be disappointed in the way that this is, the way that it drives. I didn't touch on that too much, but the uh, the way that it drives, and I think this is going to be just an electric car thing, with the battery in the floor, is it drives like it's a go-kart, like it's on rails. All right, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the driving review on the Chevy Bolt. We had it for seven days. I did not do any fast charging. I did it all. I did that for a reason. I know you can get more charge if you do fast charge. I didn't want to do that. I was trying to go for a regular person that just has 110 at home and has a fairly large commute just to see if you could keep up on that. The answer to that is yes. I actually gained by charging it at home and at work between 8 and 12 amps. I recommend it for long distance trips no I wouldn't because you wouldn't gain enough if you were staying at a hotel somewhere and just wanted to top off while you're at a hotel yeah that would do that I've had zero complaints driving this thing back and forth to work I have put almost 200 miles on this car since I've had it in my hands normally some you know you're always gonna have something to complain about everybody always does I thought it would be the electric part of it, not a big deal. I've gone two or three days without charging it. Not a problem, not a problem at all. And that's where I think people get crazy with that range anxiety, am I gonna make it? Two or three days without being plugged in, it's cold, it's not been warm up here, it's been in the 40s and 50s, it's been raining the whole time I've had the car wipers have been on, lights have been on, and it still is fine. So I think I'll just end it with that. Next time we will we'll have some more exciting stuff going on, probably next time you see us. And that is the end.